All right, well, I guess I, I have a first question, and it's um, just, there's, there's a lot of dialogue uh, in academia and in, in various circles that uh, the role of diplomacy might be changing in the world, given a variety of factors, um, such as inter interdependence and communication technology, uh, and the rise of non-state actors. So I was wondering what your thoughts are on the role of diplomacy uh, looking into the future, and maybe uh, the role of the state specifically in, uh, and the diplomatic institution of the state and its role in the future. Right. Uh, it's, it's perfectly true that I think both in Denmark but also internationally there's a lot of uh, debate going on whether um, uh, diplomacy is disappearing. Uh, some are saying nowadays we're all diplomats. You don't yeah. have to be a diplomat like, uh, like me. Uh, anyone can conduct uh, his or her own diplomacy. Now the, the, the answer is, is that, that it doesn't make uh, diplomacy uh, superfluous but we have to work in another way. We have to work in tandem with our partners. We need to uh, to work closely with those who are also engaged in, in, in diplomacy one way or the other. Uh, today, in the session I was taking part in, we were discussing uh, the uh, relationship between cultural diplomacy and branding, and of course that's something that we don't do alone. We do it uh, uh, together with uh, a number of, of, uh, of uh, non-diplomatic uh, uh, actors in Denmark, uh, like uh, the Danish Cultural Institute, uh, the Danish uh, uh, Agency um, for Culture, uh, in a way, they are diplomats as well. So, so we don't have a monopoly. Uh, the, the the time of the monopoly for for diplomats is, is long gone, and, and don't think it's it's going to come back. Uh, but again, it's not that that diplomacy will disappear because because states and nations they they still have um, their interests uh, to to defend, uh, and, um, and and that's what what we are uh, uh, that's what we're doing. And and first of all, I think that what diplomats can do is to to make sure that, that there's a unified uh, uh, decision-making process in, in a country that that, uh, um, that kind of distills the, the national interest. Uh, there would always be a, a need for someone who can coordinate, who can make sure that, that the uh, interests uh, of, of various uh, actors uh, uh, or segments of society will be taken into account. So, so we are, we are, um, we are there to, to stay. I don't think that the diplomacy mm -hmm. will disappear, but we're going to work much more closely with, um, with, um, with uh, all the other diplomats who are not ne necessarily professional uh, diplomats as we are. Okay. Uh, so on that topic, uh, structurally speaking, do you, would you say that uh, state diplomatic institutions are becoming um, more fluid and, and, and maybe structured more like non-state institutions or private organizations? And are they becoming or taking on more of a, a diplomatic structure in their uh, organizations? Is there kind of a convergence uh, taking place? Or would you say that it's still quite distinct? I think I think in the way we operate, we are maybe not so different because uh, basically what um, an embassy is is an office, and then we are running offices more or less uh, like like private companies, and we uh, need to be uh, just as efficient as uh, private companies. So I think the, the way we are running our operations are, are maybe not so so different. Uh, uh, it's clear that that uh, that we're not working for profit. A, a, a private company would be be, be doing that, but. Uh, uh, we're working for the um, for the national interest, so I think in, in many ways uh, there's uh, this kind of uh, convergence. Uh, you might not be so distinctive as a um, as a diplomat as uh, you were, let's say, uh, 20, 30 years ago. You are kind of, uh, and that has again to do with the question you just asked about mm -hmm. what about all the other diplomats, because uh, there are professional diplomats and uh, the, the the all the others uh, who are also working in various capacities, uh, NGOs who might also have a diplomatic mission uh, in a way. Uh, so in a way we are, 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 are I think there's a kind of uh, convergence and, and a lot of contact between uh, the actors and there the, the, the need to be that kind of contact otherwise you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, uh, work together and especially for a small country uh, like Denmark it's, it's particularly important that, that, the, that you work together, you have different roles we discussed in the uh, session today, the, the uh, division of labor between uh, the Danish Cultural Institute and, mm -hmm. and the Danish Foreign Service. Um, and even though we have different uh, roads, we, we, uh, we are just uh, 500 meters uh, from each other in terms of uh, headquarter location, and of course, and we know each other, 
uh, and we need to work together, even though in certain areas they have a different mission, they have different uh, mm -hmm. roles. So this is something that, that is, is very important. Uh, we've looked extensively at the relationship between nation branding and cultural diplomacy in an international context. Uh, we've seen specific examples where the combination of the two has been largely complementary and other examples where the combination of the two has been quite conflicting. What do you think, in your opinion, are the main considerations um, that need to be taken in order for them not to be conflicting? I think, first of all, you need to realize that, that basically what you're doing when you're branding uh, your, your, your nation is something that, that basically serves the national interest of the country that you're representing. Whereas if you're doing cultural diplomacy, you're doing something that should be uh, in the interest of both uh, parties, so to speak. So you, I think in a way you have a broader mandate, uh, you have more consideration that you need to take into account if you're doing cultural diplomacy. Um, but basically I don't see a, a, a big uh, contradiction. There can be a certain cases where you might argue that, uh, that there is, but uh, my own experience after having worked with this uh, both uh, abroad for many, many years, but also uh, here in Copenhagen at headquarters is that basically there's no contradiction. It, 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 it goes hand in hand, but you need to be sure about the the role that you're playing, I'm a diplomat, I'm, I'm being paid for, for, for representing my, my country uh, and uh, in, with the kind of uh, mandate I have within my, my, my specific portfolio, I, I have, uh, my job is to, to, uh, to uh, work on the image of Denmark, the brand of Denmark. That's not, not necessarily the, uh, the mandate for, for, let's say, the Secretary General of the Cultural Institute. Uh, it's a bro much broader mandate, it's, it's something that that, um, that should also further uh, uh, intercultural uh, understanding and stuff like that. So, so I think the, the most important thing is to, to realize that we have different um, we have different roles, but we can basically uh, work together. And in, in most cases, we, 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 we do work together, and we have to because um, being a small nation, the only way we can have an impact is by by, by working together um, both uh, at home and abroad. Okay, terrific. All right, Paul. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank, thank you very you much for your time. Invitation. You're welcome. <laughs>